Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Mr. Spiro Rambatis. He's president and CEO of Cyclist Cell Pharmaceuticals, and he's uh, joining us here to talk about three programs that are currently in their pipeline for the treatment of some various cancers, a transcriptional regulation program, a mitosis regulation program, and a DNA damage response program. And I'll let uh, Mr. Rambatis explain that to us um, after he gives us a brief background into his area of expertise. Welcome to the program, Mr. Spiro Rambatis. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Neil. It's good to be with you. Cyclocell um, is uh, an oncology company interested in addressing the problem of drug resistance. Mm -hmm. Uh, My own background is in clinical trials and business, and I have been in this company for a long time, almost two decades now. The interest of dealing with resistance is a very important problem for medical practitioners and their patients. Many of the drugs of the day against cancer stop working hopefully after a few years, not a few months, but this is an increasingly large problem with existing cancer patients, which also creates issues for reimbursement authorities and payers. So we're trying to develop pharmaceuticals that can restore the activity of cancer drugs that become uh, unsuccessful to treat patients that have been on them for quite a while. Are we talking about a, a, a booster uh, to these uh, chemicals, or these drugs that kind of lose their, their power over time? It's not exactly a booster. The reason why these drugs lose their effectiveness is because cancer cells are smart. They find ways to evade the action of cancer drugs. They do that by increasing the level of certain proteins, which block the suicide program that the body uses to weed out useless cells, including cancer cells. We call this program apoptosis. So these proteins uh, block the body's ability to destroy cancer cells and therefore they gain an advantage and over time become insensitive to the drugs they have responded to up to that point. So at some point, regardless of the treatment for your specific cancer, if it's a severe form of cancer, you you will succumb based on these drugs losing their, their efficacy. That's correct. And that's one of the main reasons why patients in many of the large cancer groupings or families Uh, have successively been treated with different lines of therapy. It's not uncommon today to give patients and some kind of blood cancers like myeloma and some kinds of solid cancers like lung cancer, fifth and sixth line of therapy. Obviously, that cannot run forever. And the reason why this area of research is so important for cancer patients is because we already have patients that have responded. And it's a terrible shame to have them succumb to a therapy that they have responded in the first place. So our goal is to restore the sensitivity of the cancer cells to the treatment they've had and therefore give that drug in combination with ours in order to achieve a longer period of disease-free survival. At the outset of our conversation, I mentioned three programs that you're currently working on, a transcriptional regulation program, a mitosis regulation program, and a DNA damage response program. Well, transcription is effectively the process by which cells photocopy their DNA and pass from the genetic code to the daughter cells. So our job is to modulate this transcription or photocopying process in order to ensure that mistakes are not passed on and therefore the next generation of cells has a chance to continue without programming errors, which are the hallmark of cancer. In the context of mitosis control, this is the last stage in the long proliferation process we call cancer, which is the actual process of cell division. Effectively, mitosis is when the cell divides into two. The nucleus of the cell becomes two nuclei. The body of the cell becomes two bodies, we'll call uh, cytoplasmic uh, separation. And then we have two daughter cells that are formed and then they continue to divide. So our job there is to actually throw a spanner in the works of this mitosis program. The last area is DNA damage response. This is the ability of the cell to evade the activity of cancer drugs by effectively reprogramming their DNA using DNA repair machinery the body has to actually gain an advantage. Our job, again, is to disrupt this ability of the cancer cell to repair DNA and enable it to be weeded out as a useless cell by the body's own disposal system. Also, you're in development of a drug that will do just that, are you not? Well, three of these drugs are in the clinic, each from these programs. The most advanced, as you point out, is a CDK inhibitor, which stands for cyclin-dependent kinase. CDKs are enzymes, and they interact with proteins called cyclins. This interaction of CDKs and cyclins received the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2001. But it took a long time, nearly 
two decades before the first CDK drug reached the bedside and became an approved medicine by the FDA. We now have three of these drugs approved for a certain subgroup of breast cancer patients. All three of those drugs are, are addressing CDKs 4 and CDKs 6. Uh, our drug, FADRA Cyclib, or FADRA for short, addresses the alternative option, which is to address CDK2 and CDK9. By targeting CDK2 and 9, we can regulate transcription and therefore jam the ability of the cancer cell to continue to divide and program daughter cells to continue to have the same aberrant genetic code that they had in the first place. Is FADRA an injectable? How is it delivered? It was developed both to be available by injection, Mm -hmm. which is an advantage in some leukemias. We want the drug to reach the entire body, systemic availability, as well as an oral capsule, i.e. that the patients can take by mouth. Both of those are in clinical trials, but the injectable program is more advanced. We have both uh, liquid cancers and solid cancers treated with that. The oral drug is just in solid cancer patients. Can you talk about some of the specific indications that these drugs treat? In particular, the first drug, the most advanced NEO, has shown impressive activity in a few patients with women's cancers, Mm -hmm. uh, cancers like the endometrium, ovary, and breast. So we think this is an important topic because up to now, as you already heard, the original drugs from the CDK family only work in the subgroup of breast cancer. They don't work beyond that. So here we're able to take the same approach, which generally speaking, for different targets, as I mentioned, CDK29 versus 4.6, and apply to other women's cancers. Do you have some other uh, programs that you're working on there at Cyclosan? Yes, uh, the second program is, as you said earlier, the mitosis control program. Like the CDK drug, this is targeting a different enzyme called PLK1, polyl kinase 1. This target was discovered by Cyclosan's chief scientist of many years, Professor David Glover, a giant in the field of cancer mitosis biology. PLK1 is a very difficult target. Uh, the reason why it's difficult is because of the very last step of cell division or mitosis. And pinpointing that activity requires certain design characteristics in uh, building a drug from the computer uh, until you have the chance to test it in patients. This drug, which we call c c 140 is now in the clinic at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston and has been injected into the first patients. We hope to soon have additional data to report from that program. Well, we'd like to learn some more. Where can we get some more information online about your company and the uh, programs that you're developing there? Uh, our website is www.cyclocell.com. But, of course, uh, we occasionally put out press releases and announcements about our programs. We have quarterly reports as a NASDAQ-listed company. And there's a plethora of data online on our discovery work, as well as the first clinical data in about 100 patients or so at this point with the first two programs. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Sphero. Thank you so much. Neil, thank you for your time and thanks for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.